click on the record. There we go, folks. Okay. So welcome, welcome back, everybody. This is John from Desert Rock Pottery with our weekly, weekly um, Zoom meeting. Uh, we actually have a couple minutes. I was surprised I was able to get this stuff done. Um, we have a special, special guest in the studio today. Um, most of you will not recognize him because I didn't, but he came in. He was just kind of laying around here in the studio. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Almost Dead. We got a little caterpillar and he looks like he's about most of his life is out of him. I think he probably tried to come in here because it's been a little cold at night. So, Mr. Caterpillar. I'm almost afraid to put him on my hand. You never know. Don't want to get stung, don't want to get bit. But anyways, so, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, seriousness, um, welcome to our weekly live broadcast. As you may notice, there's something suspiciously different in this environment, and that is I shaved everything, everything, smooth as a baby's bottom, unless it's got diaper rash. Mm -hmm. So my wife has been making fun of me, cracking up, because I look totally different. Uh, I've already been told that I look about 20 years younger, which I just wish the rest of my body felt 20 years younger. Although, let me see, 27, yeah, that's about, that's about, let me see, 27 years old. Oh, I'm sorry, that would have been 37. 27 was 30 years ago. I can't do the math. Ooh. So if you did the math, you know I'm 57. So uh, again, it's been kind of weird. It's been really slow this week again. This is the second week in a row. And right now I'm attributing that to the fact that I had paused our uh, Groupon um, ad. Excuse me, I'm trying to get comfortable here. I had paused our Groupon ad and it was paused for like a week. I paused it, I was trying to get to it, but that's right about when I was so busy. I had, uh, that week I had like nine, nine uh, classes that I had, plus having my, uh, uh, one of my uh, members coming in, um, which means I kind of have to be present, can't just go to bed and go to sleep. So I had paused it for about a week. And when I finally started getting back to it, it was like, okay, I'm gonna change this. I, I actually had started writing it up and wrote some beautiful stuff. And then there was a pop-up or something that came on and I'm trying to get out of it. I couldn't, I couldn't see how to get out of it. Um, Cause sometimes they have these little X's. It's not a red X, it's just a little, faint X and if you can't see it or if it's hidden behind something, you know, so I, I was like trying to back out of it. And I basically, the pop-up, uh, finally I got it to go away, but I had already backed out of everything. And so all the hard work I had done to type up all the, cause there's four different, uh, uh, four different, uh, um, types of uh, Groupons that I was doing and I lost all of my work. And then I was kind of down about it. So then it took me another couple of days to get back to it. Needless to say, <clears throat> well, then, uh, then of course, after that, when I got back to it, I decided, okay, uh, instead of writing it in here, which is, you know, anything could go wrong, you lose internet, you lose it. So I typed everything up in a, uh, a, a, a Word doc, and so that way, even if the internet went down or I backed out of something, whatever, I still had the information, so I didn't have to retype it. Uh, did that, submitted it, and I had changed my pricing. That this is the thing is I, I was trying to change my pricing, 
and I couldn't find a way of doing it with the current um, vouchers that I had. So that's why I had to start all over again. And so I do that and it is like a couple of days and normally it only takes like a few hours to get the, you know, they have to verify everything and all that. Well, it had been a couple of days and I hadn't heard anything. So I'm like wondering what's going on. And they said, oh, well, you have to change your pricing. You know, something like edit your pricing. And I wasn't understanding. It's like, what do you mean? I, have to, I, I didn't understand what I came to find out after several back, you know, back and forth conversations is the pricing that is on my website has to match. Uh, so whatever my pricing is on the website has to match the, the price that you state before any discounts, the price that you state. So I had to actually increase my prices on the website so that because the prices were here, I increased the prices here on Groupon, knowing that even though with all the fees and discounts and all that, it'd still be less than what I was um, asking on this site, if that makes any sense. So this is after discounts, this is before discounts, this is on the website. So I had to um, basically increase my website prices like here. So I got that, but it still took a couple of days. I'm like, what's going on? And I, I contacted uh, support again and they're like, oh, you, you know, canned message. Oh, you have to edit your pricing. I says, I already did this. I talked to somebody yesterday. Oh, because they, they just didn't look, you know. So uh, then that person couldn't do anything. So he had to escalate it to a different department. Anyway, so we finally got the, um, got everything done. Today is, what's today's date? Today is the 28th. Um, I think I announced last week, I'm trying to remember. Uh, we are now officially an LLC. Well, officially as of the 19th. Uh, I did not find out until maybe a couple of days later, but we are now officially dun, da, 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 Desert Rock Pottery LLC. Uh, wonderful, wonderful news for us. Um, we are, we, we've already gotten our uh, EIN or employer's identification number. Should we uh, choose to hire anybody? We have that. And it's almost, even if you don't hire anybody, it's usually a, almost a required thing for other stuff. Uh, example, we went to the bank yesterday to open up a business account. And the banker's like, well, you know, you know, what's the name on the business? Uh, you know, did you go through Arizona Corporation Commission? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, gave him, gave him that information. Do you have an EIN? Yes. So I was answering all the, the prerequisites in the affirmative. The only problem was, he was the only banker, I guess, because of COVID, he was the only banker, you know, not including, of course, tellers and all that, but he's the only personal banker there. So he's like, um, we're gonna have to make an appointment. So we have an appointment for tomorrow. And he said that, you know, uh, you can expect it to take about 90 minutes, hour and a half. I'm like, okay, no problem. So, that's what's on for tomorrow. Uh, we do have one student this week, um, which I had a little faux pas. This F A U X P A S, if I remember my French, which I don't. Faux pas. Little problem. So, a couple months ago, I was told about an event that they were having at our supplier for Raku firing. And being that I love to do Raku, uh, it's what I do mostly. Um, I was really interested in it. $60 per person. So we had arranged, uh, well, we had put our name, excuse me, we had put our name on a waiting list to hear about it. Then uh, maybe a few weeks ago or so, um, a month ago, we had received, uh, or I had received an email saying, okay, 
you know, we're going to do this. You know, I sent it out because I was on the, the waiting list. So I went right away and paid for the event. But I did not actually put um, it in my calendar. And gosh, golly gee, um, wouldn't you know that because I didn't put it in my calendar and I didn't block off the time, I had three appointments that day that scheduled and I didn't realize until <clears throat> a couple of days before, this was this past Saturday, a couple of days before, I happened to be up at my supplier getting some stuff and all that. And the guy who's um, running the, the event says, oh, so we'll see you on Saturday for the Red Kufar. And I'm like, oh my God, I forgot. So here I am last minute scramble to contact these students and I'm feeling so bad. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling so bad. And so I'm like, I have to, to rearrange. Well, actually it, only one student was really affected. So that student from last week made the appointment for this week. So actually we don't have any new, new appointments this week. It's, it's one that we had to reschedule. The other one did come last Saturday. Actually, we had uh, two other appointments. One was a for one of our members and one was for um, a new student, which we uh, did real nice folks. I, we've been actually really blessed to have some really awesome, awesome um, students and, and uh, members and all that. So we are highly blessed here. Um, so one of the things I want to kind of depart from is I actually because of all this, these firings. So on Saturday, we did a firing. Um, yesterday, I did a firing. What's yesterday? Yesterday is Tuesday. Monday, I did a firing. So Monday, um, back, let me go back here for a second. Um, at the beginning of the month, we had our monthly um, firing event where we did four different firing types. One of my students, actually, I'm going to have to reach behind me. I've got so many things here. Uh, so one of my students actually had a piece that they, um, I guess what I should do is I should bring my little thing over here. And of course, everything's in. One second, folks. I thought I had a better plan, but apparently I did not. And I'm right here, so I'm gonna put this in front of me. Okay. Uh, so one of my students, uh, when they did their pieces, they their choice for they they didn't choose to do a glaze firing. They actually chose to do actually a combination specialty firing. So what they did is on the inside of the vessel, they glazed the inside so on the third of the month when we did our specialty firing event uh it got fired but it was they on the outside they wanted the ovara firing which i will get to ovara in a little bit but so they wanted the ovara firing on the outside well I felt it's doable because the firing temperature for the glaze is about 1850. If you do that first, and then the Ovara is only 1650. So I figured it should be okay. Now, what I probably should have done is uh, on the, the event, we did the Ovara first, we did Raku, we did Sagar, and then we did Horsehair. What I should have done is I should have switched the front, the first two. So I should have done the Raku first. And then after that, I could have done the Ovara. Uh, and I would have had his piece done, but I didn't. 
and I didn't get back to it after the event. So I had a, uh, this last Friday, I put uh, started another brew, another mixture of the Obara mix. And so I did this piece. So this is actually the first piece I wanted to show. Um, when I, I first got the piece, uh, when it first fired, I did not like the, the colors, the way it looked, it looked really nasty. But after firing, I'm not sure how well this is showing. Um, and I don't have my phone with me. I was going to use the light on that, but it actually looks much nicer. Uh, the thing is that it is a little rough. Um, and there are, I'm not sure you can't see it, but there are some cracks. But overall, it's nice. And the outside, this jet black and the, the rim didn't get much on it. Because um, this was the first piece I, I dunked. And I had to be careful not to get the Obara on the inside. So I'm trying to dunk it as holding it inside, outside, trying to dunk it in. So it was actually pretty cool. Now, I, I kind of went ahead. This was done on Monday. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, well, I, I'm going to show the, the pieces that I, I did on Saturday. Um, not only my pieces, but I have some of my wife's pieces here as well. It was a wonderful event. Um, I got to learn some different ways of doing my Raku firings. Uh, so uh, I'm going to save this one here. I'll do my, my I have four of them. One, one, two, three. Oh, well, one of them I don't have. One of them actually uh, was, and I didn't did I take a picture. I don't think I took a picture, or maybe I did. I took a picture in mass, um, but I don't have it here anymore because it was going to somebody um, uh, from my church. So it was given to them on Sunday. But the three other pieces, um, this one, and I have another one here, another example. This is the normal uh, form that I use for my Ovara. So I have the texture on the side. And what you see is there's some parts of the glaze because I, I just kind of lightly touch the side here with the glaze. Uh, putting the heavier glaze on the top, um, on the inside, and on the bottom. Now, oh, I got it upside down. DRP. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So you see some like uh, lines here. That is actually supposed to be, this is actually a crackle glaze. And what I learned is when you're using these crackle glazes in order to, before you put it in the combustion chamber, spray it with some water. The water will cool it off a little more rapidly. So you put that in and then that will open up cr literally cracks in the glaze, which will then suck in the carbon. So that was not my favorite piece, um, but it's okay. This one here is actually a glaze that, uh, that the, the host provided this is a clear crackle and in this one that he did um well actually they they did spray this one but it really didn't come out too well um but this one in his glaze it came out a lot more pronounced so where you see the major crackles here and here that's that's actually where the the, the water hit it um so when i did my uh, um, glazing yesterday, I forgot to do that. I, I actually forgot to, um, uh, I forgot to, um, to sp spritz it with water. So I have to remember the next time I do it, I, I want to experiment with that a little bit. So what I'm going to do, uh, so the next piece here, um, before I brought it to get fired, um, I noticed a, a little bit of a cra uh, some cracking in the bisque ware. So there could have been a problem with the way I threw it or, or something, but this is probably by far my
my favorite, favorite piece. Now, you'll see there is a, actually a crack. I kind of see it. It's coming from the top, coming down here. It comes down here and a little piece chipped off. But if you put this on a shelf with this side away from people, um, it looks actually pretty awesome, kind of like a plum and there's some copper. And uh, this glaze uh, by Mako is called um, black metallic. And also on the inside, it just looks super awesome. But there's some, there's some major cracking. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, now, it should probably be said that the clay body that I'm using here is not a Raku body. It has no grog, no sand, nothing to help with the thermal shock. Um, so it seems like the bigger pieces, most often, uh, with this clay body are struggling with the thermal shock. Uh, I'm trying to keep them pretty thin, but usually at the bottom it's thicker. So those are my pieces. Then my wife, uh, she had her pieces. Um, this one, I'm just no particular order. Uh, I'm not sure there's a, a glaze that they, they gave Kind of looks real similar. Uh, I forget with something uh, de like desert sand, co uh, copper, or something like that. And it looks like an off-the-shelf one called um, peacock mat, which we use a lot. Um, I think they had two of them: one that was sieved and one that was unsieved. This one is, been, I think, sieved. Looks pretty cool. Nice little uh, candy dish or something. Um, this one I can't remember the name of because this was minus and I didn't use this place, but not not bad actually. Um, it's really hard to see. You know what I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my light over here. Let's turn it up this way. There we go. Okay, there you go. So now you can see get a little more light on the subject. Not bad. Uh, the next two, I'm really liking. Um, the smaller of the two, this one, I think is like Copper Penny or something. Awesome. I just, oh, it literally looks like a Copper Penny. And mine it kind of did the same technique that I, I like, where you just kind of lightly go over the, 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 the high points in the, the recesses. That's where the carbon comes in and just looks so satisfyingly cool. Um, so that one is, that one is really, really nice, really super nice. This other one, I don't know what, what, I'm not sure what uh, glaze she used, but this one is also so very, I, I like shiny things, you know, bling, 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 bling. Uh, so, those are minus four pieces and three out of my four pieces. Now, uh, on Tuesday, yesterday, I um, did, uh, well, I did a Ovara and then I, well, I did the Ovara twice and um, like two. So, um, two Raku. So this one, uh, this is one of my carved pieces. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a little uh, something here. It may have been the the, the, the some some of the uh, there's almost like some bubbling, and I'm not sure what that is from. Right here at the bottom, the rest of it's pretty pretty darn smooth. Um, really liking it the inside as well. This is the same as the one I did on Saturday. So they're the same exact, do, 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 same exact uh, glaze, same clay. I think if I was to do anything different, I might use a different glaze here. 
uh, on the, the carved out pieces and maybe along the rim, maybe two of the pieces. But other than that, this is still pretty darn nice. I, I, I really do like that. Um, then, well, I think I'm gonna do this one. So the, the uh, piece here that I did on Saturday, I, I said, I'm gonna try this on a piece that doesn't have so much texture. So what I did is I had this piece, it's a lidded jar, um, and I you know, did the gallery here on the inside, and it still smells of smoke. On the inside, I didn't do anything on the, the upper rim, I didn't put anything, and on the lower, um, I don't know what you call it, the thigh, I didn't do anything. Um, but there, I, I see right here, see if you can see it in the light, there is some cracking. And it, I think, it, yeah, it comes down. Um, but again, these raku, and there's another crack over here. Um, so these um, are not meant, these are not food safe anyways. I would, I'll probably keep this just to have, you know, I can throw change or something. Um, I, I need to do better on my lids. My lids are not as tight, as flat as I want. This one kind of rolled up a little bit. There's, it's not exactly flat. So I'm gonna be working on lids, learning that better. So that that's not bad and actually, uh, I had it on my counter in my kitchen and I took some stills and I noticed how very complimentary that color actually is to my counters. It actually had some of the same colors. Um, and probably my, my favorite out of yesterday's firing is this piece, very similar. It's, it's literally just one glaze. Um, same thing, I only glaze the top and the rim on this. Let's see, ooh, ooh, ooh. do it this way. Here we go. There's like blue and like at the bottom, it's a little green here. And I think that has something to do with the temperature um, at the bottom of this. Let's turn it this way. It's more like the copper, but there's a lot of flashes of the bluish green here. Um, so I'm not sure, I gotta remember which glaze I used on this. Usually I, I should be writing this stuff down. I really should be using uh, pen and paper here. Um, so that is actually my favorite. And I was actually talking to one of our Airbnb uh, guests who stay in our home here. And that was her favorite piece as well. I think it's just the color color scheme. So there's times that you have something, it's just one color with little flashes of color. Um, and then there's times where it's a little more dramatic. Again, it's just one glaze and different, different, um, so I think what it is also is the way I wrapped this. I think the the paper, the carbonizing uh, stuff, the shredded paper was closer to the bottom. And so where it, it got more of the carbon, it turned this color. Where it had less of the carbon, it turned this color. I, I think I'm gonna experiment with that. So now, we, I, I did a bunch of, I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pieces, technically eight. So seven Ovara pieces, and they are, here's two, boom, boom, boom. My, my standard, I, I like this tech, this form only because of the texture. It, it gives something when you're, when you're feeling it, it gives you feedback. You know, I mean, even a smooth surface will give you feedback. Um, this one is interesting because if you notice when I was doing it, I was purposely going a little deeper. I wanted holes through it. Uh, and the purpose of that is 
you can use this for potpourri. Um, so that was something I was experimenting with. I have two more. And depending on when you fire or when you dip it, uh, and you know, as the piece cools down, here, this piece was done at the beginning. This is like the first Ovara piece, I think, uh, after, after my student piece. This was the last piece. The piece had cooled down significantly from this piece. And there, although there are, is some good carbon on the back and on the inside, for the most part, it's just a real light, creamy brown, which, some people may find that attractive. I'm not, it's not my favorite, but it, it, it works. Um, I had done a piece here. This is just kind of an experiment. And I haven't actually washed these off yet because um, you got to wash and scrub them. So all these, all these pieces have to be washed and scrubbed. This piece, actually, I had a light coat of terracig, uh, like a terracotta color, terracig, um, which is the same as this piece. This is also the same terracig, but many more coats than this one. This one was just light. I was, this is the very first one I did with the terracig. So, um, I'm actually kind of liking it. Uh, there was like almost no carbon at the bottom and it could have been, it was cooling off already by that time. I could very well refire this. When you refire and bring it up uh, for, for the Ovara at 1650, all the carbon will burn off. And so I can redo it and I might do that. Um, I think this piece would look really good if I, put a, um, a, a sealer on it. It would really, I think it would really pop. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, I did another one, another small vessel. Oh, look at here, it's just, one is almost all black except for like the rim, black on the bottom, you know. So, you know, sometimes, you know, as you learn, you learn what works and what doesn't, but there's still no, definite um, uh, there's no no guarantees in what it's going to look like now this next one here um, I had to do in two pieces so this is the piece also a lidded vessel so I fired him both together and I did them both the lid which is very thin and that came out, that was actually dipped second. This one was dipped first and it did not look like this. It barely carbonized. Um, and this one, this is only one firing. So what I did is I actually put this back into the kiln, fired again, brought it up to, uh, uh, to 1650, made sure the, the Ovara mix was, um, was uh, uh, fully mixed and I dipped it. Why it's not doing it at the top, I'm not really sure. The inside, you know, also the top, a lot of it. Um, but so this is the, the second attempt and it looks pretty good, I, I, I think. You know, um, again, I think this, this one may look good with a clear coat on it. Uh, I have uh, acrylic sealers uh, here. I got one, two, three, four, three, four. Yeah, four, four cans of acrylic sealers. So that may be my next project after I go through and do. Uh, I have some a bunch of trimming to do here. Um, one other thing I, I did, I forget, forgot to mention. Okay, um, for our students who take our class, they are invited back to come and to glaze their pieces. Now, I only had four glazes. Uh, they were Laguna dipping glazes. 
and they they are actually wonderful glazes. The problem is I cannot seem to get the mixture of water with the glaze because this is one is a dry mix and you have to mix up the water with it and I can't figure out how much water it needs and there's only a generic recipe if you will but you have to sit there and play with it and I'm like I don't I just don't have time and that's why I only bought small batches of it in like a one gallon bucket uh, because I don't have time to try to you know figure these things out it's just you know so what I've done is I've basically taken the dipping pouring glazes off the off the the option list here and I've bought about uh I think 17 uh of the uh regular glazes and then another let me see three six I think I got nine ten eleven 10, 11, 12. I think I got about 12 of the Raku glazes, somewhere around there. So the students actually have actually more choices and we're gonna continually add more glazes uh, as time goes by. You know, glazes are, are not cheap. Uh, and of course I'm, you know, especially with the Raku, I'm doing my own glazes. I'm also trying out a new clear coat glaze um, because the glaze I had used once before, let me bring the piece over. Um, so, uh, there is a process called agate wear, and it's where you mix two contrasting clay bodies. So usually white is the base, usually, not always, usually white is the base, and then you'll use another color of clay or you can take some white and you can stain it. And I've done both and I, I have to practice more with it. I have uh, two stains. I have a green stain and a blue stain, uh, mason stains. So, um, so when you do that, you'll get, you know, after you mix it, you get some swirls and it looks real beautiful. The problem is that the Laguna clear glaze, the dipping glaze that I was using, it turned my beautiful white and red into some kind of gr olive green. Or, and, and some people might find this beautiful. I do not. Um, this is just a practice piece, a, a closed form. It's quite heavy, uh, you know, because as I've progressed, you know, so this is kind of a test piece. It, it makes a good paperweight and somebody might like it. There's a lot of crazing, uh, a lot of um, crazing is, I'm not sure if you can see it, all the almost micro cracks. So I guess it's a crazy piece. <laughs> so um, I bought this, uh, well, on Saturday, I was talking to our, our teacher um, and his name is Derek, I, you know, he works up at, at uh, our supplier, Marjan Ceramics, and very intelligent man, very knowledgeable about kilns, about glazes, you know. Um, and so I was talking to him about the, the problem I was having with my agate wear when I was using the Laguna glaze, you know, is turning the stuff green. So, and that could be just a reaction. Uh, I forget what it is. Um, I, uh, uh, one second, one second. Oh, sorry about that. I got the glaze. And I also had to tell my wife to go into the other room. She's like, talk, she talks very loudly when she's talking to one of her uh, countrymen <laughs> and she doesn't realize that I'm on a zoom meeting so I got a uh, zinc free I think that Laguna may have some zinc in it and it's reacting to 
the uh, the iron that is in the uh, the clay, and that's probably why. So I uh, bought this. Um, I should say my disclaimer: I'm not being uh, paid by any company to uh, uh, advertise their piece. I'm not really advertising, but this is it's a zinc-free clear Sahara liquid glaze, um, and so I've been told to try this. So I just actually took some pieces yesterday. I had a bunch of different agate wear uh, and a bunch of pieces in general that I um, I uh, brush glazed. And so hopefully this next week I'll get those back. And I'm hoping that I have some success. If it works, I will probably get back to doing some agate work because I really, really like it. You know, it's very similar to the Raku process, um, you know, it, it has its own beauty. You don't need to really, I mean, a lot of the Raku are, are I mean, brush glazes, but uh, even the the um, Ovara is very beautiful. Uh, and being that we have not, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting off track here. My mind is going, it's been uh, a little, almost about 40 minutes here. I went a little bit long here because we're doing the, these things. So, uh, but as there are nobody here at this time, uh, normally I would open it up for Q and A, but we don't have any questions. So um, we are going to be continually moving forward. Um, I'm investigating potential places to start. Uh, a commercial space. Uh, one I was told is about maybe twelve hundred dollars or so a month, um, which can be doable. It can be doable, um, but there's a lot of things we need to do. A lot of things uh, need to get a kiln, a, a better kiln. Uh, my, oh, that's the other thing. Ah, my baby has been in the shop since last week. My 1964. Uh, 56 year old press kiln setter kiln uh, has been in the shop getting some new uh, elements. Uh, the guy said that he had already put the top elements in when I visited yesterday. He says, I might get my kiln back uh, yesterday afternoon, which I didn't hear from them. So I'm going to give him a call this morning and say, Hey, what's up? Do you get my kiln? <laughs> Because I got to pay for it, you know, of course, but I need to get it uh, as soon as possible because I am, you know, the, the challenge I have is I'm running out of space. You know, I run out of space real quickly, uh, especially when teaching. So this has been actually a good time to not have the kiln or, or, you know, because it's been slow. So I guess it's, there's a blessing in all things. So anyways, um, what did I say? Uh, so we will keep in touch. We will be back here next uh, next week, um, Wednesday, uh, at our new time at 10 a.m. Uh, so uh, don't forget to like, like and subscribe if you're on YouTube and to like our page on Facebook. That's uh, facebook.com forward slash Desert Rock Pottery and youtube.com forward slash Desert Rock Pottery. Uh, so thank you very much for stopping by and have a blessed day and we will see you guys soon. Keep practicing. Bye-bye.